Ever since then, things had gotten out of control. In the last hundred years since that incident, there had been a total of 17 brides who went missing in the Mount Eugen area. Sometimes there'd be a couple of decades of peace, and sometimes two could go missing in the short span of one month. A horrific legend quickly spread. A ghost groom lived on Mount Eugen, and if a woman caught his eye, then he would kidnap her on the road and devour the marriage procession. Originally, this affair wouldn't have been reported to the heavens. While 17 brides had gone missing, there were thousands more who were perfectly fine. Either way, the girls couldn't be found, and they couldn't be protected even if everyone wanted to do so. Everyone could only make do with the status quo. The only thing was, there were now fewer families willing to marry their daughters into this area, and the locals didn't dare to make a big show of their weddings. That was all. But it just so happened that the father of the 17th bride was a lord official who doted on his daughter. When he heard of the legend, he meticulously selected 40 valiant and capable martial officials to escort the marriage procession of his daughter. But the daughter was spirited off anyway. Now this ghost groom had really stirred up the hornet's nest. Anyone this old lord official could find in the mortal realm couldn't do anything about it. So in a fit of outrage, he assembled a group of official friends and conducted a round of crazed religious services. He even followed the guidance of a great master and opened up his stores to feed the poor. Something like that. It was a huge uproar. And finally, it alerted a few heavenly officials above. Otherwise, it was practically impossible for the voices of insignificant mortals to reach the ears of the gods in heaven. That's the gist of it, Shilian said. Since those two still looked very uncooperative, he didn't know if they had actually been listening. If they didn't listen, then he'd have to tell the story again. Nan Fang looked up, though, and frowned. Are there any similarities between the missing brides? There are those who are poor and those who are rich, those who are beautiful and those who are ugly. There are lawful wives and there are concubines. In short, there's no pattern, Shirlian said. We can't determine at all what this ghost groom's preference is. Nan Feng hummed and picked up his teacup to take a sip, seeming to be thinking now. Fu Yao, on the other hand, never touched the tea that Shirlian had pushed in his direction and had been languidly cleaning his fingers with a white handkerchief this entire time. He coolly said as he wiped, Your Highness, how would you know that it must be a ghost groom? This can't be certain since no one's ever seen it before. So how would we know if it's a male or female, if it's old or if it's young? Aren't you a little too quick to judge? Shirlian grinned. This scroll is a summary provided by a civil official from the palace of Ling Wen. The ghost groom is just the common way to call it. However, what you've said makes a lot of sense. They spoke a bit more and Shirlian realized that the minds of these two junior martial officials were quite clear. While they didn't appear very friendly, they weren't muddled at all when discussing matters. Shirlian felt relieved. Looking out the window, the hour was getting late, so the three left the small shop for the time being. Shirlian put on his bamboo hat and walked for a bit before suddenly realizing that the two behind him were not following. So he looked back, feeling puzzled. It turns out that the other two were also watching him in bewilderment. Nan Fang asked, where are you going? To find some place to settle for the night, Shirlian replied. Fu Yao, why are you rolling your eyes again? Nan Feng continued his questions, still puzzled. Then why are you heading to the wild bushes? Shirlian often camped out in the wild and slept on the streets and could spread out a cloth sheet and spend the entire night just like that. So naturally, he was ready to find some cave to start a campfire as he'd always done. But it was with Nan Feng's reminder that he suddenly realized that Nan Feng and Fu Yao were both martial officials under a martial god. If there were any Nan Yang temples or Xuan Jin temples around, then they could enter directly. 
so what need was there to sleep out in the wild? A short while later, the three found a broken down Tudi shrine in an incredibly inconspicuous little corner that worshipped a round and small stone lord of the ground and soil. With incense residue and shattered platters, it looked exceedingly desolate. Shirlian called out a few times. This lord of the soil and ground hadn't been worshipped or called by anyone for years. So when he suddenly heard the call, he snapped open his eyes and saw three people standing before his shrine. The two on the left and right respectively were both enveloped in a sheen of spiritual light, like the Nouveau Riche, their faces barely visible at all, and the deity jumped in alarm. His trembling voice said, Do the three heavenly officials have anything to command of this humble one? Shirlian inclined his head. No commands. I just wanted to ask if there are any local temples that worship either General Nanyang or General Xuanzhen. The Lord of Soil and Ground did not dare to affront him and replied, Um, um... Then in a quick divination, with the pinch of his fingers, he answered, There is a local town temple five miles from here, and the one worshipped is... is the General Nanyang. Shirlian put his hands together in prayer. Many thanks. However, that Lord of Soil and Earth was blinded by the two balls of spiritual power on both sides of Shirlian, so he quickly vanished. Shirlian fumbled out a few coins and placed them in front of the altar shrine. And when he saw there were fallen, burnt-out incense sticks on the ground, he picked them up. Throughout the entire thing, Fu Yao was rolling his eyes so hard, Shirlian almost wanted to ask if his eyes were tired. After walking five miles, they indeed spotted a local town temple standing fiery red by the roadside. While the temple was small, it had everything, and people were going in and out of it extraordinarily lively. The three concealed their forms and entered the temple. The one worshipped within the hall was a clay divine statue of the martial god Nan Yang, donned in armour with a bow in hand. When Shirlian saw this divine statue, he mmmed inwardly. In a small temple in the countryside, the craft and paint of the divine statues could be expected to be rough, but on the whole, this statue was still significantly different from Shirlian's own impression of Feng Shen. However, distorted divine statues were something that every heavenly official had gotten used to already. Never mind that their own mums wouldn't recognize them. There were heavenly officials who didn't even recognize themselves when they saw their own statues, sometimes. After all, there weren't many artists and masters who had actually seen the real forms of the heavenly officials. So the statues were either distorted beautifully or distorted hideously. One could only rely on the posture, spiritual device, attire and crown to determine which heavenly official this was. Usually, the more affluent the area, the more the divine statue would please the heavenly official. The more impoverished a place, the worse the taste of the craftsmanship, and the more tragic the sculpture became. To speak of the present, there was only General Xuanzhen, whose divine statues were in a better situation. Why? Because for everyone else, if their statues were ugly, then whatever. Leave it be. But when Mu Qing saw his statues were hideously sculpted, he would either secretly destroy them and then make people re-sculpt, or appear in dreams to express his displeasure. This went on for a long time, and the grand believers had all learned that they had to find an artisan master who could sculpt beautifully. All of the temples of Xuanzhen were exactly the same as their general, particular and tasteful. After Fu Yao entered the temple of Nanyang, for two whole hours he thoroughly criticized the statue of Nanyang from head to toe. Something about how the design was deformed, the colors tacky, the craftsmanship crude, and taste bizarre. Shirlian watched as the blue veins on Nan Feng's forehead slowly popped out and thought that he'd best quickly find another topic of conversation to change the subject. It just so happened that there was another girl who entered to pray. 
and she very sincerely knelt down. Shilian spoke up warmly, speaking of Nanyang Jinjin's main domain is in the southeast. I'd never imagine you guys would have such a following in the north too. When people constructed temples and palaces, they were actually imitating the divine palaces of the heavenly realm. As for divine statues, they were reflections of the heavenly officials' venerable selves. The temples were where the believers assembled and attracted worship, becoming an important source of spiritual power for the heavenly officials. And due to various reasons, such as geography, history, and customs, people of different regions often worship different gods. A heavenly official's spiritual power would be unleashed to the max on their own turf, and this was the main domain advantage. Only to a heavenly official like the great martial emperor who had believers from all over the world and possessed temples everywhere was the notion of a main domain meaningless. It was a good thing that his own general's divine temples would be so popular even outside his main domain. Nan Fang should be proud, but judging by his expression, this was very much not the case. On the side, Fu Ya gave a slight smirk. Yes, yes, he's deeply loved. Shilian said, but I just have a question that I don't know if... If you're going to say you don't know if it's appropriate, then don't say anything, Nan Fang said. No, I was going to say, I don't know if anyone has the answer, Shilian thought. But he had a feeling that it wouldn't be good if he said it. So in the end, he decided to change the subject again. Yet unexpectedly, Fu Ya languidly said, I know what you wanted to ask. You must be wondering why there are so many female believers coming to worship. This was indeed the question that Shilian had had in mind. There had always been fewer female believers than males in the martial god's stream. Only he himself was an exception, 800 years ago. However, the reason for this exception was very simple. It was only two words, good looking. He knew very well that it wasn't because he was distinguished or because he had extraordinary spiritual powers. It was merely due to the fact that his divine statue was good looking and his palace temples were handsome too. Practically all of his palace temples were constructed by the royal family and the highest skilled experts and artisans of the kingdom were summoned to sculpt the divine statues according to his face. Besides, because of that phrase, body in abyss, heart in paradise, the artisans often liked adding flowers to his divine statues and liked planting a sea of flower trees in his temples. Thus, at the time, he had another title, the Flower Crowned Martial God. The lady believers liked that his divine statues were good looking and liked that his palace temples were filled with flowers and by that alone, they were willing to walk in casually to pray. But the usual martial gods often had their faces sculpted to be serious, savage and cold because their killing aura was too great. So when the lady believers saw this, they would rather pray to the Bodhisattvas instead. While this statue of Nanyang had none of the killing aura, it was even further from good looking. Yet there were more female believers praying than there were males. Nan Fang didn't seem to want to answer this question either. So it was making Shulian even more curious. Just then, the girl finished her worship, rose to her feet to reach for the incense, then spun around. After the spin, Shirlian nudged the other two. The other two were already very annoyed, and after this nudge, they looked, and both of their faces dropped. Too hideous, Fu Yao exclaimed. Shirlian choked for a moment, then chided. Fu Yao, you can't talk about girls like that. If he must be honest, what Fu Yao said was true. That girl's face was incomparably flat like someone had slapped her face into a pancake. The five features were so plain, it almost seemed to be a mistake. If they must be described, then only crooked nose and slanted eyes could be used. However, Shirlian didn't register whether she was beautiful or ugly at all. The main thing was when she spun around, there was an enormous tear on the back of her skirt and he couldn't pretend like he didn't see it. 
Fu Yao was startled at first, but he quickly calmed down. The popped veins on the corner of Nan Feng's forehead also instantly vanished. Seeing his face change color so drastically, Shirley and quickly soothed. Don't panic, don't panic. That girl took the incense and knelt down anew and said as she prayed, May General Nan Yang give his blessings. This believer, Xiao Ying, prays for that ghost groom to be captured soon, so that no other innocents will be harmed by him. She was sincere and devout in her prayers and didn't sense anything peculiar going on behind her at all. Nor was she aware that there were three men crouching next to the foot of the divine statue she was praying to. Shirley and fretted, what do we do? We can't let her walk out like this. Everyone on her way home will see. Besides, judging by that tear on the back of her skirt, it was obvious that someone had intentionally ripped it with a sharp object. So she probably wouldn't just be seen by a crowd of onlookers. She would also be publicly laughed at, and that would be a round of considerable humiliation. Fu Yao was unconcerned. Don't ask me. The one she's praying to isn't my general Xuan Zhen. One shall not look at impropriety. I saw nothing. Meanwhile, blood was draining from Nan Feng's face. He only knew to wave, not talk. A perfectly fine, unbridled, strapping young man was forcibly rendered mute, completely helpless. And so, Shulian had no choice but to take action himself. He took off his outer robe and threw it down below. That outer robe flapped in the air for a moment and drifted down onto the body of that girl, blocking that very inelegant tear on the back of her skirt. The three men sighed a breath in unison. However, this breeze truly felt wicked and startled that girl. She looked around, took off the robe, and was confused for a moment before she placed it onto the altar. She was actually completely unaware, and after she had stuck in the incense, she made to head out. If they had let her walk out around like that, the little maiden would probably not have the face to look at anyone ever again. The two on each of Shirley's sides were completely frozen. They were completely useless, even if he wanted them. And he sighed. Nan Fang and Fu Yao only felt the space between their bodies empty all of a sudden, and Shirlian had already taken form and jumped down. The lamplight inside the temple was dim, and a small breeze rose from his sleep, causing the firelight to flicker. That girl Xiao Ying only saw a blur before her eyes, and a man suddenly emerged from the darkness, reaching out to her with his upper body bare, and she was scared out of her wits right then and there. Just as expected, she screamed. Just as Shirlian was about to speak, that girl's slap had already struck out in a flash, and she yelled, Harassment! Pa! And Shirlian was slapped, just like that. The slap was clear and crisp, and the two crouching down on top of the altar both felt the sides of their face twitch at the same time. Shirlian wasn't mad at the strike, however, and only forcefully stuffed the outer robe into her arms, swiftly whispering something. That girl was greatly alarmed, felt her behind, and suddenly flushed red in the face. Tears welled up in her eyes. Who knows whether it was anger or indignation. She clutched that outer robe Shirlian gave her and dashed out, covering her face, leaving Shirlian standing there half bare. After she left, the temple was empty. A cool breeze crossed through the hall, and all of a sudden, it was a little cold. Shirlian rubbed his cheek, and with that red hand mark on half of his face, he turned to the other two. All right, everything is solved. Nan Feng pointed at him. Did you tear your wounds? Shirlian looked down and owed. After undressing, what was revealed was a body smooth and fair like jade. Except his chest was heavily wrapped by layer after layer of white cloth, firmly bound. Even his neck and wrists were wrapped in bandages. Innumerous small cuts crawled out from the edges of the white bandages, truly startling. He figured his sprained neck was pretty much recovered by now, 
so Shirlian started unbinding his bandages. Fu Yao glanced at him and then questioned, Who was it? What? Shirlian asked. Who fought you? Fu Yao demanded. Fought? Shirlian was confused. No one. Then all of these injuries on your body? Nan Feng was hesitant. Shirlian looked at them blankly. I fell. These were indeed the injuries from when he tumbled down from heaven three days ago. If it was from a fight with another person, then he actually might not have been hurt to this level. Fuya grumbled something, but it wasn't clear. Either way, it definitely wasn't praising him for his fortitude, so Shirlian didn't bother to ask, focusing only on taking off the heavy layer of bandages from his neck. The next second, Nanfang and Fuya's eyes hardened and fell on his neck. A black collar was encircled around his snow-white neck.